Friends, my name's Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. I'm feeling a little bit better. Still kind of sick though, so prepare for some more sniffling and snorting and shitting and shorting and flipping and flopping and clipping and glopping and whipping and whopping and. Tonight we're gonna ruin the perfectly good <laughs> newbie Joe, <laughs> newbie Joe, no humming bee, hummingbird uh, V3. <laughs> by uh changing everything uh maybe not everything but uh we are going to play around with the tune and then we are going to throw some upgrades at it to see what's what um and yeah it will probably not fly as good as it did last night you never know though um newbie drone spends a good amount of time and effort uh getting their the, the entire uh system to kind of work together really well and you know, we're not really used to that. A, a lot of Bind and Flies seem like they're just a bunch, of, although they're getting better. Bind and Flies are getting a lot better. But for a long time, Bind and Flies really felt like just a whole bunch of parts thrown together. Um, a lot of times they would come with a tune, but it, 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 the tunes didn't really make much sense. Um, this thing right out of the box is really, really good. Check out yesterday's live stream if you want 
um, my first reaction to it. Um, I'm really, really impressed. And it flies like the combination of all up weight motors, propellers, um, and the, and like the flight characteristics, I don't think I'm going to make it fly better. I, I don't think that different props are going to work better than these Azzies. Um, I think that there are different props that uh, I don't think I know that there are different props that are more durable than these Azzies, um, but they're not going to perform as good. And I think that the tune is pretty much bang on. Uh, but, you know, let's screw around with it for science and uh, see if we can squeeze a little bit more performance out of it. Um, and then the last thing that I'm going to do is really like just lay into it with some upgrades. Uh, we'll go to BT 2.0. We will swap over from these Hummingbird 0802 25,000s to the Newbie Drone 0702 29,000 kV motors. Um, and yeah, hopefully that will actually get some performance out of it. But the super simple, super cheap ways of getting extra performance out of quads, right? Tuning, propellers. Um, I don't think that that's going to do much here, but let's find out together. What do you say? Uh, this is also a Q&A live stream, as they all are. Any questions that you've got, drop them in the chat, which is over here, and uh, we'll talk about them, talk through them, give you good, as good an answer as I possibly can. Um, the beauty of long form content here is that we can actually dive into these questions and give you a proper answer rather than five words of utter nonsense that you get from Facebook uh, groups. So uh, in the chat, Hockey Rounds is first, FPV Flyer was next, Frank Nicholas. What is that? Can, uh... It's can I get a channel, but it's all in lowercase, all smashed together. <laughs> Uh, can I get a channel? Slapo Matt, Kevin James, Artie McKinney, Pink Kahoo, uh, Zippy, One Arm RC, Artie McKinney, Metal Ritzkin, FP Avery, Sunset Park, Denzel the Terrible, uh, Scott FPV, Mo FPV, Avery the Ham, Booster, uh, who else is in here? Tongue Out is in the house, License to Drive. What's up, everybody? Thanks for coming. Enjoy yourselves. Don't enjoy yourselves too much, though. I don't want to have to call the cops. Uh, all right. Let's get into it, yo. If you want to talk directly to me, all you got to do in the chat is type CIDFPV. It'll light up. It'll light that up in orange like you see here, and I'll know that you're talking to me. If you don't, I'll assume that you're talking to each other. Um, FP Avery says, yo, great to see you, man. Hope you're feeling better. Uh, definitely feeling a, a, a little bit better, but I'm still... Um, yeah, I'm still struggling, but I'll be better soon. I'll be better soon enough. Uh, can I get a channel that says cool audio track? Uh, it's from a guy here in Atlanta. Um, Denzel the Turtle says, Uh, he also says, woot, woot, how's it going? Uh, and all you handsome, handsome, gangly mofos. Scott FPV says, see FPV and gang, how's it going? Mo FPV also says, or no, Mo FPV says, what's up, y'all? Abraham says, good chance I'm going to pass out from the sound, sounds of Seattle FPV talking sweet F. Oh, how I hate being sick. Um, it's been a week. One week ago, last Monday night stream, I looked right at you beautiful bastards and said, I'm getting sick right now. Tomorrow, I'm going to be full-blown sick. This is going to suck. And here we are a week later. And I'm still a little bit sick. Adam C is in the house. He says hello. Oh boy. All right. Away we go. Hey, uh, let's. Let's uh, fly this a little bit. 
so that um, you can get a baseline. You don't have to go back to yesterday's stream and uh, and watch it right now. I can give you a little bit of a baseline here. As it sits right out of the box, no real changes. Changes. This is ridiculous. Um, woo! <laughs> Welcome to the shit show, my friends. Um, yeah, no real changes other than like rates and I changed the modes, but I didn't change anything that actually makes it fly any different, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, I do want to plug this into Betaflight though and sneeze again. But unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to sneeze again. For at least 60 more seconds. Um, I need to change the switch position for turtle mode because I got it wrong and uh, it's been very annoying. So let's go into modes here and we're going to take the beeper off of the middle switch position on aux 3. And we're gonna put flip over after crash where it belongs on the middle position. And now all is right with the world. Uh, let's save and let's take another look at this wacky pid tune on here. Um, I actually really like this pid tune if, if, if we're being honest. Uh, tons and tons and tons of D gain. Uh, which I preach all over the effing place. Uh, D gain is the magic, uh, and it it, it it's yeah, it's mega. Uh, although, huh? Now that I look at the actual numbers, wow! What I don't know if. I don't know if these sliders are actually right. So the the sliders are technically off here. Um, but I assumed, yeah, no, the sliders are wrong. The The sliders are not telling the tale of, of the actual values that are in here. Wow, now that I'm looking at the actual values, this tune is even weirder than I thought. Pitch has a hideous amount of P gain and D gain compared to roll. Um, and you can see down here the pitch damping and pitch tracking sliders that allow you to boost the, the pitch numbers over the roll numbers. They're at one point, they're just zeroed at, well, I mean, they're one now, I guess we could say. Um, usually that only gives pitch a little bit of extra over roll, but this is a lot. Um, that's nuts. So on a tiny whoop, you do have a little bit more weight on the pitch axis because your battery is on the pitch axis, right? You, you put the battery through the middle and the bottom there. Um, so it is good to have a little bit more pitch, uh, uh, pit authority with P gain and D gain than roll. But this is a lot. This is like twice as much. So this is this has more this has so much authority on pitch as like a as like a flight characteristic like they're they're making it fly a certain way by having all this extra pitch uh p and d gain which is really cool i i, I really dig that um I'm gonna mess around with that on my own tiny whoops. That's super interesting. This thing flies great. Like, uh, you know, I'm I'm really shocked at how good it flies. Um, and the tune probably has something to do with that. It also has very, very, very little yaw p gain, which is crazy. Usually we put shitloads of yaw p gain in to tiny whoops. Um. So this is wild. I am, 
And it, it, it does not have the amount of degain that this slider value of 2.0 would uh, suggest. This is, it's, it's got a little bit less degain than P gain on the values here, which would normally have this damping slider at like 1.0. So let's, let's, let's do this. Let me zoom back out real quick. Um, I took a screenshot here. Let's use the sliders to try to get the values here where, where uh, newbie drone has them. The, the sliders just change these values. The, these numbers are what the PID, uh, the, 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 the PID loop actually functions off of. So we're going to turn this on and it's going to completely change everything here. So let's, uh, yeah, let's try to match it up with the, uh, with the screenshot that I just took here by using the actual sliders. So I'm just gonna take these pitch damping and tracking sliders and I'm just gonna ramp them all the way up because uh, they've got just absolutely tons of pitch, uh, pit value in here. Okay, so that's actually too much. So let's pull them down a little bit. Pull them down to 1.8. That's still a little bit too much. Let's go to 1.6. Now we're getting there. Okay, so they've got a P gain of 62 and I'm at 58. So let's pick this up a little bit. So 64 is, well, no, 61 is like right there. Great, so uh, the, the P and I gain tracking is now 61. They had it at 62. Pitch is 102. They had it at 100. Um, the I gains are at 32 and 55. They had them at 31 and 32. That's probably why they wanted a lot less pitch eye gain. And with the sliders, there's no way to isolate the pitch eye gain. So that's, that might be the main reason that they had the, the sliders turned off. I'm okay with having more pitch eye gain here. That's fine. Um, taking a look at y'all. Wow. The, the, they've got 38 on y'all P gain. Uh, these sliders have it up at 61. So that's, so what we're gonna do here, when we put this mode to roll pitch yaw, it has ratios set and it's gonna keep yaw within these ratios and in the sliders, there's no specific slider to adjust yaw. So what we can do is change the mode from roll pitch yaw to just roll pitch. And now it's gonna allow us to just specifically dial the yaw values in. So we're gonna put these yaw numbers exactly where they had them. All right, and now we're gonna focus back on pitch and roll. So the eye gains are at 32, pretty close to 31. 55, not very close to 32, but that's okay. Uh, D max is 78. They had it all the way down at 55. Um, it's at 78 because this slider is all the way up. So let's bring this slider to a more reasonable value. Uh, cool, if I put it at 1.4, uh, it's gonna bring the D-Max to 54 and 99. They had 55 and 88, that's pretty close. I'm cool with having more uh, D-Gain on, uh, on pitch than they did. Although I can, I can back that, actually yeah, no I can back that off a little bit. So let's pull the pitch damping slider which just adjusts the pitch damping gain down and we'll pr we'll bring it to 89 whereas they had 88. Um, they have also basically turned off D min and D max. Uh, they've got the same numbers here, 55, 55, 88, 88. That just disables D max. I don't like that. I, th th this slider value is at zero for the dynamic damping, that's D max. I don't like that. I, I really like dynamic damping. It basically boosts the D gain when it needs it like when it's in prop wash and I find that it works really well. So I'm going to turn the dynamic damping back on here. Um, I'm not going to turn it up super high like I usually do. I'm just going to do 0.2 because I'm assuming with how good this thing was flying that their tune is damn good. So I don't want these values to be like nutso out of the ballpark from where they had them. Um, and then they had feed forward at 60, 90 and 24. Um, Let's set this to, why did I have that at 46? That, why did this change? What, this is weird. When did those numbers, 
changed. That's odd. Okay, whatever. Um, feed forward, they had it 60 and 90. That's a little high for me, but I want to, again, keep this close to where they had it. So let's do that. Okay, 0.4 brings us into the ballpark. So it looks like when I move these sliders, it's resetting the yaw. That's very strange. Um, so I'm just going to, again, force the yaw values that they had. So if you want to start using the sliders and you want the same PID tune, um, not exactly the same, but super, super, super close. Um, this is how you would do it. Dynamic, uh, damping slider. J yeah, just here you go. 1.4, 1.05, 0.4, 0.2, 0.3, 1.45, 1.6, 1.3. Um, that's going to get you there. So let's save it. And let me just take a quick look here at the rest of these settings. I'm gonna turn up the jitter reduction a little bit just for a little bit of additional stick smoothing. Um, they've got the iTerm Relax cut off all the way up at 15, which is usually what it gets run for racing. Since we're doing um, freestyle, I'm gonna drop it down to 10. That's not gonna make a drastic difference in the way this thing flies. Um, that's just a kind of a personal choice. Uh, Anti-gravity is up on eight. That's pretty aggressive. Uh, dynamic damping, we'll leave that alone. Motor output limit 100%. That's great. Uh, they have the dynamic idle turned off. Kind of interesting. Um, I like dynamic idle, but again, let's let's kind of leave it alone uh, for the time being. TPA, TPA set point. Okay, cool. So that's saved. Uh, rate profile settings here. These are my rates. Uh, no throttle limit turned on and no throttle expo, uh, filter settings. They've got a good amount of filtering. They, they strangely do not have the gyro RPM filter turned on, but what they're doing here with the dynamic notch filter is working really well. Three notches, Q factor of 300, which is pretty low. Um, that's going to be a pretty wide dynamic. They're going to be three pretty wide dynamic notches. Uh, min frequency of 100, max frequency of 600. These are defaults. I'm going to move that max frequency all the way up to 1,000. Um, the When you're filtering those high... Basically, I'm making this filter uh, now between 600 and 1,000, all the way down to 100. Um, that extra 400 hertz range all the way up top is not going to really require much CPU. The the higher up in the frequency band you you filter, the easier it is on the CPU. So I'm adding a bunch of extra range to that dynamic notch filter, but I'm doing it all the way up top where it's damn near free in terms of latency and, and delay. Um, and what it is going to do is when I put these 29,000 kV motors on here, they're going to really wind up with the bi-blades um, and it's going to make sure that these dynamic notches can move high enough to cover those higher frequencies. So, um, yeah, don't think that I'm adding a bunch of filter delay by moving that max frequency up to a thousand. I'm just making absolutely sure that, um, yeah, it has enough range to cover the really high RPM that tiny whoops to, uh, turn. Um, the only other thing that I want to do is take a look at PID sum, and we're going to do that in the CLI. Um, PID sum is the amount of power that the PID loop is allowed to ask the ESC for, basically. So I'm going to type get PID sum. What's happening? Why is the CLI just not working? What's going on here? Did the AIO get too hot or something? Let's uh, unplug it and plug it back in. That fixes everything, right? All right, connect, CLI, there we go. Now the CLI is working. Get PID sum. And they have not changed the, the PID sum limits. So I'm going to. Um, this is like free flight performance in my experience and in my opinion. Um, and you just turn it up to a thousand. And, and this essentially allows the PID loop to ask for all of the power that the ESC can give it. Um, which is just a good thing. Like if it's a big, scary, dangerous quad, this is maybe not a good thing, but on a tiny whoop, what do you got to lose? Set PID some yaw 
at a thousand. So now we have changed the PID sum limit, which is the roll and pitch, and the PID sum limit yaw to a thousand, which is a hundred percent. The default values are 500, which is 50% for roll and pitch, 400, which is 40% for yaw. Um, and we're going to type save. And now we're good to go. Now the PID loop has more power at its disposal. Let's see if any of these things have wrecked the flight performance. They very well could have. The, the, the PID tune was really dialed, uh, which means that it was pretty close to perfect. And we just made it a little bit more aggressive. Uh, so let's see if it catches on fire and lights the house down and kills babies. That's how it works. Uh, I still haven't changed the OSD. I might as well. I, I left the OSD alone because I assumed that it wouldn't do the little disappearing glitching act. Um, but it is doing the little disappearing glitching act. So I might as well set the OSD next time I plug it in to to the way I like to have my OSD. All right, here we go. Let's see how it is with a couple of little changes. Okay, so let me get, let you guys listen to something. Listen to when I come off the throttle. See how, can you hear how it doesn't go completely silent when I come off the throttle. That means there's a little bit too much. Um, that means there's not enough filtering and or uh, a little bit too much pit authority in there. And that's more than likely from the PID sum adjustment that I made there. So I'm actually gonna back the PIDs off a little bit to get it to quiet down when it's at zero throttle. What what you were just hearing there, and you can do this test with your own quads, just bounce the throttle up and down. What you want is for when you drop the throttle all the way down, the motors should come all the way down and be very, very, very quiet. If the motors come most of the way down, and they, but they don't come all the way down, and uh, if they're kind of like, uh, 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 they, they just sound a little nervous, that means that your PID tune is on the ragged edge and you really don't want it there, um, in my opinion. <clears throat> because if anything happens, if you bend a prop, if you bend a motor shaft, if the frame starts to weaken up a little bit, um, it's gonna explode. It's not gonna explode, it's, it's just gonna really get bad. Uh, so let's pull the PIDs back ever so slightly. I'm gonna do that with the master multiplier uh, because that's gonna adjust all of the values at once. So let's just drop it a little bit here. We're just gonna pull it down to 1.2. That's a pretty small change, but I bet you it's all we need to get this thing a little bit more under control. Let's see if that was enough to, uh, to chill this thing out a little bit. All right. Uh, the video is gray. Why? No, it's just my goggles. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Better. It's still, there's still a little bit of rage there. Listen. It's just not, it's just not super clean yet. So let's go down another point one. I would rather have, um, I would rather allow the PID loop to access more of the power than to have the PID gains cranked up, which is timing based. Um, and that's something that I've learned from Mark Spatz, Chris Rosser, all the really, really, really smart guys. Um, so let's come back in here and we're gonna take another 0.1 out of the master multiplier. That's gonna bring it down to 1.1 and we're gonna save. Disconnect, try again. And let's see how that is. Um, 
Shout out to Newbie Drone for nailing the tune on this thing. It, it, you know, the, there, like I said earlier, there's a chance that I'm going to make this thing worse all night tonight. Um, they've really done a good job specking this thing out. I'm really impressed. There we go. Well, ah, it's still, there's still a little bit. Listen, ready? Listen. It's pretty good. It's It's close enough where... I'm just going to let it rip. I'm stuck on the gate. <laughs> oh, I didn't quite get it. Didn't quite give it enough forward momentum there. Oh, it's so nice to have turtle mode back where it belongs. Um, I don't think it flies any better with it this way. I bet you the black box is... If it had black box, I bet you it would be a little bit better set up like this, but this wasn't a bad... <laughs> it still went through the gate. Uh, do they have crash prevention turned on on this? Hold on. Let me bump into something. They do not. Okay. That might be why I'm having a hard time recovering from crashes. I'm used to crash prevention. And the way that it reacts when you smack into stuff. But I've what's funny is I've been talking about turning crash prevention off lately. Um, so this is kind of nice to fly something that has it turned off. Ah. There you go, little fella. Whoo! Yeah, bro. So, man, look at the... It's It's got... Plenty of yaw authority, even with that low yaw value in the in the PIDs. That's really impressive. Um, you know, cranking the PID values up just for the sake of cranking the PID values up is never a great idea. Like, you want the right amount of PID authority for, um, for the mechanical system. And so, yeah, if you only need... Uh, a, a yaw p value of 38 then great i mean there's there's no reason to have it higher than that um and this has plenty of uh reactiveness on the yaw axis so yeah no sweat uh all right now let's really ruin it by changing the props um the azzy props uh the only thing i don't like about them is kind of the most important thing <laughs> Uh, which is durability um, for me. It's not, uh, I don't know if it's actually the most important thing, but it's really, really important. Um, the, uh, yeah, so typically with with their quads, when I take off the Azzy props and put anything else on there, it doesn't perform, they, they don't perform quite as well. They crash better, um, which is really important to me because I crash a lot. Uh, but yeah, it, it typically performs worse. So fair warning, that's probably what we're about to see. Um, but Hey, for science, right? Uh, so yeah, these the other thing I don't like about the Azzy props is they get stuck on the motor shafts. Uh, the inner diameter of the prop hole is, uh, a little bit too small in my opinion. You don't ever have to worry about the props flying off the motors, but you have to worry about ruining the motors when you're trying to remove the props. Um, the the best way to kind of do it, I showed you yesterday on the live stream. Pinch the motor, watch <coughs> watch the motor wires. Don't move, don't touch them. Pick uh, pick a gap in the in the standoffs where the motor wires aren't. Pinch the bell of the motor in your left thumb and forefinger, in your weak thumb and forefinger. And then uh, for the propeller, you want to try to grab two, if not three, if you can fit your fingers in, of the blades so that you hopefully don't um, bend them. The Azzy props what are very, it's very easy to bend the blades of the props and then you can't really bend them back straight. And you're going to just turn the propeller, and I just ruined one of these Azzy props. I just bent one of the blades up. The problem with them is that the, the, and the reason why they perform so well is that the, each propeller blade is very thin. And what happens is, and they're at an angle. 
And when you pull up on them, you'll change the pitch of the blade and you'll bend it up. And then it's impossible to get that pitch correct. So now you've got one blade that has a, a jacked up pitch and that makes them vibrate really hard. So th this Azzy prop here is now ruined. Um, the the Tiny Woo prop puller is the answer, but you have to, yesterday on the live stream, um, I pushed these props all the way down on the motor shaft, which helps you not bend the motor shaft, but then it makes this thing kind of hard to dig under there. So what I usually have luck doing with other props is, like I said, just kind of taking them gently. This one came off just fine and rotating them a little bit, and that'll get a little bit of a gap between the prop and the motor bell, and then I can get this thing in without having to really dig down in there. Um, but yeah, you can't push, you can't pull up on these blades even a little bit too hard. And I just did it again. I just ruined another one. Yeah, you, you just have to be so, so, so incredibly gentle with them. Um, I have another, they, they shipped this with a yellow set of Azzy props. Um, and so if I put Azzy's back onto it, I'll use those because I've now wrecked two of these teal ones. Um, which sucks, but that that's always been my experience with the Azzy props. Like, if you can get them onto the motors without bending the blades, they perform awesome. As you start crashing hard, they're going to get all bent up and ruined. Um, if you try to remove them to try a different propeller, they're, they're kind of like one-use propellers in, in a way. Um, that's just been my experience. Maybe you guys are, are more gentle than I am. I don't know. I'm pretty gentle and I have little tiny uh, skinny fingers. So I have a feeling if anything, I'm, I'm more gentle than the rest of you. I did not look to see if this thing was props in or props out, but I guess we can just look at beta flight. Uh, it should tell us in the motors tab. Let's connect here and go to the motors tab and it is props in. That's interesting. Um, I've been wanting to test some stuff to test props in on some stuff. Um, what I really want to test is what I really want to do is a, is a blind test props in versus props out to see if I can tell a difference. I can pretty much guarantee you that I won't be able to tell a difference, but um, I still want to do it. Ouch. Uh, so we're going to put on these, the best tri blades that there are at the moment, which are the gem fan 1208s. Um, and I'm going to put them on props in, uh, and we're going to leave, we're leaving the hummingbird 0802, 25,000 KV motors. Um, these propellers almost certainly will not perform as well because they're a little bit heavier. Um, the reason that they're heavier is because they're significantly stronger. Um, these are, these propellers are strong enough. It, uh, they're the right strength in my opinion. They're not, they're not too strong and overly heavy. Uh, but they're strong enough where you can take them on, you can put them on, take them off uh, without ruining them. Um, so, yeah, we've now got Gemfan 1208s on here. Let's see how it is with these. And again, this is also just kind of like a baseline of, of flight performance for this thing before we start doing a bunch of upgrades to it. Um, so far, we have really gotten no... Uh, We've really gotten no performance improvement from screwing around with the live uh, with the uh, tune, which is not surprising at all. So let's see how these props are. See how noisy it is off throttle. When the when the Azzy props are fresh, they're really well balanced. You hear it when I'm off throttle? It's like, ah, it, it's, it's just, yeah, it's, uh, this pit tune is cranked up. They, they ship this thing with a really aggressive tune. Oh my God. Is everybody okay? Nobody's dead. All right, cool. Look at the lights on this thing, man. Look at, look at, look how cool this thing looks. Look at that. Four little LEDs just banging away. I dig it. Okay, let's uh, see how the performance is. I mean, feels about the same. 
The Azzies are, are a lightweight, low-pitch tri-blade. These are a, a, a lightweight, low-pitch tri-blade. Um, tune is still absolutely dialed. Ah, I think this tune is actually a little bit better. Um, yesterday, I was able to get some prop wash in stuff. Ah, there's a little bit. I think it has a little bit less prop wash, so I, I think I've actually improved... <laughs> I think I've actually improved the tune a little bit. Um, not drastically. But what is nice is that, and this is a used set of these 1208 propellers. If this was a fresh set, I bet you it would. Um... Ooh, okay, I bet you it would. Uh... Oh, come on now. Uh, be a little bit more chilled out at zero throttle. Uh, I couldn't decide if I wanted to go forward or backwards, and instead I did neither. Oh, come on now. Hey, what was that? Ah! So th this definitely has a little bit less power than what I'm used to. So I am coming up short on a lot of these like uh, big throw moves where I like throw it up through the through the hanging gates. I'm not gonna be able to recover from that. But luckily it's right behind me. Um, but it, it does have just enough power where it's not like excruciating. Um, and the tune is really good. So yeah, it's... Uh, It's got a, a really decent amount of... No, I don't have enough battery to go up and throw it around in the living room. Let's do some small stuff in here. I was having a hard time doing this stuff last night. I might just... Nah, I'm still having a little bit of a hard time. I'm, I'm not used to the up tilt that the goober canopy is at. I'm also not used to the... Jesus. I'm not used to the, uh, the wider field of view. Of the... It acts funny in turtle mode. Um, sometimes it just doesn't spin the motors hard in turtle mode. It, it acts a little funny. I don't know what that's about. Um, but yeah, there you go. So that's what you can get out of it for practically nothing. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. I would run it on the Azzies and leave it alone. Um, when th th there's there's an obsession with presets and tuning in FPV that's really bad. Um, it's not going to make you fly any better. It's actually going to make you f fly worse. Um, if you're trying to fly better, the worse the tune, the harder you're going to have to work and the more you're going to have to learn. Um, so if you want to be a better pilot, for the love of God, stop tuning. Put a shitty sloppy tune on there and then you'll get to see when you put the rig into dirty air and you'll get to learn how to not do that. Um, and that's a really important thing. That's a really, really good thing to learn. Um, we also have this obsession like with the presets and whatnot and like, sure, the presets will make the rig fly a little bit better, but it's going to put it more on the razor's edge. The preset is not for your exact rig. Potentially the tune that it came with out of the box is, this is a perfect example of that. If you take this out of the box and you put it on one of the presets, it's going to suck a big old bag of dicks. Don't do it. Stop doing that. If you buy a quad that has a tune on it, fly the damn thing. If it flies horrible, think about maybe tuning it or let it teach you how to be a better pilot. As long as it's not like an unsafe tune where the, the motors are getting hot, right? Um, but yeah, when you buy a rig, don't tune it right away. Don't change the beta flight firmware right away. Just fly the damn thing. It's probably going to fly really decent. Just keep flying it. Stop screwing around with it. Um, Flywoo, I think it was, recently put out a, a message. People were getting all, they're buying flies and they were flashing them from, I don't know, 4.2 to 4.3 or something like that. And like Flywoo had some custom stuff on the tune that it came with that wasn't on the, the target 
for that flight controller and it was making the rigs it was either bricking the the quads or like i don't know what it was doing but um they had to put out a a big like psa basically saying like for the love of god stop like stop updating the flight former just fly the quad that you bought like you paid for it fly it um so yeah stop tuning yo leave it alone if there are pro if you fly it and there are problems sure use the tuning to tune out those problems don't just dump a preset on every single thing that you've got it's probably going to make it worse and it's going to make it harder to troubleshoot down the road so yeah just uh just just fly yo just fly um if you start selling your footage or you start working cinematic jobs sure tuning is going to become important but once you get to the point where you can find and get hired for those jobs, you're already, you're already going to know how to tune. Um, so yeah, chill, Winston. Chill. So I'm now going to take these uh, Hummingbird 802 25,000s off, and I'm going to swap on some 0702. Well, I don't have another battery. I, I should put by blades on these motors now and try it with by blades, but I'll just tell you what would have happened if I'd done that. Oh, it doesn't have quite enough power. The pit loop is working a little bit better because the propellers are lighter weight, so the response time is less, but it doesn't have quite enough power because 25,000 kV is, is just not quite enough for the by blades. Uh, but we're about to go up to 29,000 kV, which is beautiful for the by blades. So, yeah. Uh, I'm going to steal the motors off of my Acro B65 uh, because it does not have a camera at the moment. So here we go. And I'm actually, to, to be really honest, um, so far, I am happier with the performance of the Hummingbird than the Acro B. The, I don't know, whatever the newest Acro B is, V4? I think it's V4. Um, more than likely, that is because the uh, Hummingbird has a lighter weight AIO in it. Um, the Acro B has some extra bells and whistles, but on Tiny Whoops, bells and whistles don't really do a whole hell of a lot. Uh, lightweight, as we know from Miata's, is the answer. Um, and the, this Hummingbird also has a lighter weight frame, right? It's got the uh, the PP frame? Or is it the PC frame? I don't remember which one. But this is the lighter weight frame um, that we found out on yesterday's stream. Is a I'm not going to say it's fragile, but it's not as strong as the regular cockroach frame. I will say that. Um, but a longer screw in the rear of the Goober canopy, I can almost guarantee you would have prevented the... Uh, the 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 post breaking off uh that we had happen on the um on the stream yesterday so let's do this motor swap here first uh and then we'll do the bt 2.0 swap i do not have an extra ph 2.0 battery i do have two ph 2.0 250 mah batteries but i really want to run this thing on a 300 um, so let me turn this charger all the way up over here and I'm going to put one more 300 mAh battery on there and hopefully it'll have enough charge in it by the time I'm done screwing these motors down, uh, that we can run it on a proper 300 mAh battery. The 250 mAh batteries are great cause they're lighter, but they're significantly more saggy. Um, and yeah, it, to me, the, the weight savings does not offset the sag. It, it, it flies better on the 300 mAh batteries. Um, but, I don't know why I said but. I don't have anything to say after the word but now. Um, let me scroll up a little bit and see what I missed in chat because I, I it's scrolling like absolute crazy. But Ritson says, can you drop that screenshot in Discord just for fun? I can indeed. Um, hey, this is my full-time job. Uh, over on CiateFPV.com, there's a million different ways that you can support me. Um, I'm going to put the screenshot in to 
uh, Toothpick and Whoop. Uh, there is, uh, there's a link over on CIDFPV.com to my Discord that'll get you access to these uh, text channels here. Uh, if you want full access, you got to give me seven and a half cents an hour. I know that's a lot to ask, but if you're into FPV, you got a couple of extra dollars to support your buddies that are giving you the, the knowledge to help you from buying garbage. Um, over on Patreon... You can subscribe for three bucks a month, um, which is like 10 cents a day. And it really helps me out. It is the only way that I'm able to do this live stream 10 hours a week, every single week and have it be as decent as it is because I, it allows me to literally have this as my full-time job, um, which is just amazing. And, and I, I thank you guys so much for that. Uh, it's really, really, really cool. It's why I am able to trash on products so much that suck and deserve to be trashed on because you guys support me rather than these companies, right? Um, so yeah, you get better, more uh, uh, more accurate reviews out of it. And I get to talk shit, which, I mean, come on. <laughs> Who doesn't like the ability to call a spade a spade? We got some sayings in this country that are just, just odd. All right, putting on 0702 number two here. Uh, Denzel the Terrible says, why don't you zero everything and do the Ciati tune from the ground up to see if you get similar science? Um, I've done that before on newbie drone rigs and it has been kind of a mess. Um, the the you know they've spent time and effort very obviously um in getting this tune to where it's at and i kind of trust them basically uh tiny whoops are unique little beasts they they require um their own set of they they just tune differently and uh this rig is a little bit heavier than what I'm used to uh, with the Mobulas. And it's got, I believe it has a BMI 270 gyro, which is 3K instead of four. And it just has like a different sort of noise profile to it. Um, so yeah, I mean, to be super honest, I, I, I kind of just trust them. And, and I've been, I'm impressed enough with their tune that I don't want to go totally off script here. Um, and put like a more normal tune on it. Uh, maybe once we have it fully upgraded, we'll do that because like we're about to change so many things that their tune is probably gonna um, go out the window. Maybe not, but we'll see. Um, it's gonna get a big bump in power from the uh, BT 2.0 swap and potentially from this motor swap here. Um, so yeah, their, their tune might be a mess in a minute here. I'm, I'm actually really interested to see what happens. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's kind of why, but maybe, maybe we'll do that if, if we have a little bit of time at the end, um, or maybe we'll do that on whoop Wednesday this week. So yeah, we'll see. We will see. Ah, come on. Get in there, Lewis. It's an F1 joke. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, what else is happening in chat? Denzel uh, says, CID loves the D. I do indeed. RT McKinney says, Sneeze Fest 2023. Uh, License to Drive says, Slapo Matt has a good question on whoop rates. A few comments back. Slapo Matt says, LOL. Before that, he says, I recently got my first brushless whoop, Pavo Pico. I want to fly it indoors. Can you recommend rates and or motor limits uh, to allow my fairly new bass to be able to fly indoors? Um, I got to be honest, that's not going to be a great rig for a new person to try to fly indoors uh, because it's heavy. That That is all things considered. Um, like in, in terms of rigs that, 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 rigs for flying indoors um that is a is a pretty heavy quad there um i think it is knocking on the door of 100 grams all up weight what you see me fly on the live streams here that i crash all over the damn place are like 30 something grams all up weight so you are like 
almost or maybe even more than triple the weight. And basically what that means is since these are not like RC cars that have tires that are gripping the ground, right? All we have is air to stop these things. So they're very slidey. And the more weight that this has, the more slidey it's going to be. You're flying straight, but now there's a wall. You want to turn left. You turn this thing to the left, it's still got all this momentum. Well, that Pavo Pico, Pico has triple the amount of momentum that this thing does. So when you go to turn away from the wall, it's going to want to just keep going and it's going to bash into the wall. So um, you've got your work cut out for you big time with, with that particular quad trying to fly it indoors. Um, there's not a whole hell of a lot if anything really that you can do to the tune to to make it fly better indoors i mean technically you can play around with the with throttle expo um to help with the throttle control indoors but throttle control is probably not going to be the the primary issue that you're going to be running into the issue you're going to be running running into is bouncing sideways into stuff and there's just nothing in the PID tune that has anything to do with that. Like that is just a, that's just an engineering problem, right? Like if you have something that's too heavy and you want it to be really nimble, you got to make it lighter. Um, so I I wish I had an answer. There just isn't an answer. I, I wish I had some sort of an answer for you. The real answer is to buy a proper tiny whoop that's, 20 ish grams dry without the battery. Um, and that's what you learn to fly inside on. And then after a couple of years, if you really work hard, you can get good enough to fly a hundred gram rig in the house. I have these tiny lifters that pick up an Insta 360 go Two that are 78 grams. And I have a hard time flying those in the house. And I've been doing this for almost eight years. Um, so yeah, you, it's, um, I wish I had, <laughs> yeah, I wish there was some magical bullet that I could, uh, that I could give you. The 0702 Newbie Drone 29,000 kV motors are 1.6 grams on my scale. The Hummingbird 0802 25,000s are 2 grams on my scale. That, my friends, is a big difference. 0.4 of a gram doesn't seem like a big difference, but think of it in percentages, right? This is a... This is a 20% decrease in motor weight. That's a really, really, really big deal. Um, and motor weight is super important because it's all the way out on the ends of the arms here. Um, so yeah, swapping over to these motors should have a pretty significant effect that maybe I'll actually be able to feel. Maybe not. Um, maybe I'll just be able to feel a difference in power from the additional KV, uh, but there's a chance I'll be able to feel, uh, the difference in weight. Hey, can, can somebody look up the weight of this or does somebody remember from the live stream what the weight, the all up weight of this rig was, uh, when I weighed it on my scale? I want to say it was 21 point something. I remember being impressed by how light it was. Um, and I remember that my weight on my scale was less than what was on their website. Um, and then I'm going to, I'm going to give you guys a dry weight in a second here. Got to get this last motor bolted down. All right. And we're also going to move to by blades. Now, since we're going to a 702, uh, that is not a motor that has quite enough stator volume for a heavy tri blade propeller. Um, so we're going to go down to some newbie drone venom by blade propellers that I have drilled out with my 0.99 millimeter drill bit. So I should be able to get them on and off the motors without wrecking them. Um, TBD says new to the stream, loving the nerdity. Just built a 2S Mobula 7 with the intent to carry a Runcam Thrum Pro. Very, very cool. That's uh, pretty similar to my tiny lifters, which are designed to carry, which are 2S, and they're designed to carry an Insta360 Go 2. Denzel the Terrible says, look up at the lights when you uh, feel a sneeze coming. I've heard that before. If you look upwards, you can uh, cancel a sneeze. I actually don't like canceling sneezes. It, it gives me a deep sense of non-satisfaction. 
I like to let that shit fly, yo. Just spray your fucking monitors. It's great. You'll thank me later. Denzel the Terrible says, why uh, do we got that? Uh, Metal Dirtskin says, I like to get close to the manual tune with the sliders so I can mess with it more easily. Yep, did that with the Mavio 6 tune on my other whoops. Me too. Uh, Metal Dirtskin says, can you drop that screenshot? No, we got that. Uh, Kenny Kobe says, what firmware are you on? It ships with 4.4. 4.4 uh, is really similar to 4.3, which is really similar to 4.2 as well. Um, ever since 4.2, the firmware has just been incredible. Um, the, the difference in uh, flight characteristics is realistically not uh, noticeable enough for us mere mortals. Um, Dre, the drone Dre the Drone Guy says, what up? Uh, FP Avery says, any, rec any recommendations on a 4S motor for a 3-inch build? Um, I would need a whole bunch more info to actually make a, a, a logical recommendation. With that question that you asked, I don't know if this is a toothpick. I don't know if it's a, a long range rig. I don't know if it's um, a, a basher rig. Uh, there, so over on CIDFPV.com, uh, one of the ways that you can support me is to hire me for a one on one session uh, through Fiverr, or you can always just message me and we'll schedule it through Instagram. Um, in those one-on-one -on -one sessions, I actually had one earlier today, one of the things that we can do and one of the things that I'm best at is what I call build planning. I have a list of 20 some odd questions that I ask you to really figure out what you're building. Like, are you building a, a thrasher, a long range rig, a cinematic rig? What are you gonna use it for? What payload are you picking up? What camera is gonna be on it? Um, how do you fly? Who are your favorite pilots? Who do you want to fly like? What are you doing with your footage? Um, whole big laundry list of questions. Once I have all those questions answered, now I can make a set of recommendations. Um, you know, at the moment, all I can say is head on over to um, fpvknowitall.com, which is Joshua Bardwell's website. Um, and there's a micro, there's a sub 250 section over there. Um, that I have created, which has a ton of really good info in it. And there's a big old motor section here. So um, read the text. That's going to be really important for you to read this text. I've spent a shitload of time writing all of this text. And it's where all the nuance comes in as to which of these motors you might be able to actually, um, d d d your ability to pick a motor that's going to actually work for your specific uh, build and for your specific usage of that rig. Um, the whole point of building custom rigs is that you can cater it to your specific wants, needs, likes. Um, and yeah, in order to do that properly, you you unfortunately can't just go onto a Facebook group and say, hey, what motors should I buy? Um, anybody that actually answers a, a, a super open-ended question like this on a, on a Facebook group should be shot in the face. No, they shouldn't. You should just ignore them because they're an idiot that doesn't know anything. They, they don't know enough to ask you to, to have the conversation that I'm having with you right now. Um, this is not me picking on you for the record. I, every single live stream I get asked, yo, I'm on 4S. What motor should I get? And it's just impossible for me to give any kind of an answer that has um, any validity to it or will help you in any way, shape or form. Know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, I would love to do a build planning session and talk about, uh, all of these things. And then I can actually, um, answer that question for you. Uh, this doesn't have props on it. I was going to say it said 19 point something grams. I was like, holy shit. How did that happen? Wow. It's not that much heavier than that though. 20.3 grams. I think we saved almost an entire gram. I think we saved more than an entire gram. Um, if we can get the the tune on this thing happy, uh, this might be something here, my friends. Uh, that's uh, you can just buy these motors and just take a bunch of screws out and plug them in, and away you go. Um, these are the only 0702s that I know of uh, that also have ball bearings, so these should be uh, extra efficient. Get these newbie drone venom props on. 
Uh, I've found these newbie drone venom props to be every bit as good as the uh, as the gem fan by blades. Uh, actually, I think the gem fan by blades are a little bit better. But hey, this is a newbie drone rig. Um, if you buy it from their website, you can buy these motors along with it and these propellers along with it. Although they probably also sell the gem fan by blades. Get a set of those um, as well. Propellers are cheap. Get a bunch. Um, they're fun to pop on and off and, and try. Uh, and you can build this entire rig as it sits right now without a soldering iron. Uh, so we're going to need to plug this thing into beta flight and spin the motors up to make sure they're spinning the right direction. Nah, you know what? Let's just throw a battery on it and see if it takes off. Um, props in, props in, props in, props in. There we go. Now we're on purple props, yo. And we're on tiny little bi uh, motors with bi blades. I hey that 300 mAh battery is at 4.27. Let's give it another second and let's throw it up in the air on these 200 mAh batteries. Uh, maybe this uh, cell checker is BT 2.0 only. Let's just throw the battery on it and see what happens. Um, hey, by the way, my dad, since he's amazing. Uh, but after the live stream last night, he bought one of these hummingbirds and had it shipped here. And he sent me an email and he said, for the give for your next giveaway. So the next, uh, the big, the first Monday of every month for patrons, I do three giveaways. So join the Patreon. It's a monthly thing. So if you join now, you'll get in on this next giveaway and you won't forget. Otherwise you'll definitely forget and you definitely won't win a hummingbird for five bucks a month. You can join the tiny whoop and toothpick tier and this coming giveaway will be one of these hummingbirds, courtesy of my awesome dad, the Binary Bear, David Ciotti. But he got that name Binary Bear back before the definition of binary changed from a computer thing to an LGBT thing. So just keep that in mind. Um, the and and bear is because he's he's a big bearded fella. Um, he looks like a bear again before the LGBT community very much changed the definition of the word bear. Not changed, but like redefined, you know what I'm saying? Uh, this battery is charged, look at that, 4.16. These little 250 mAh batteries, um, they uh, they do not hold their charge very well. They, they discharge a little bit like that. So that's, um, yeah. This is a fully charged battery. Let's see how it is, will it take off? Nope, props are, uh, motors are spinning the wrong direction. All right, let's get it into beta flight real quick. And reverse the motor direction. And then we'll fly it. Because right now, all it's doing is driving itself into the carpet. Uh, all right. There we go. And pH 2.0. Uh, screwdriver in my damn way. Launch beta flight flight here connect motors tab motor direction i understand the risks it's just a tiny whoop start and spin two of the motors are not spinning what the hell oh shit the props are uh the props are hitting on the frame so these 702 motors must sit a little bit lower or these propellers sit a little bit lower and yeah the prop is fouling on the uh on the supports of the frame so i need to pick the prop up a little bit here which i'm trying to do at the moment did i get it yep i got that one and now i'm gonna get this one Come on now. Let's see if I can use the prop puller here. I think that popped it up a little bit. There we go. Yep, that should be good. Nope, still hitting. I wish these frame manufacturers would give us a little bit more clearance on these. Uh, there's something going on with this motor. Why is it so hard to turn right there? Oh, farts. 
Uh, the, um... These motor screws are too long. Oh my god, I did it again. I did it to another set of these motors. God damn it. Um... Oh, farts. Yeah, these motor screws are a little bit too long. Uh, there's this weird thing with these newbie drone 702s where all right so the base the 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 bell of the motor the the stator and then the stator base is down here above the stator base the stator base is where the screws come up into above the stator base is a pcb um every single other motor that pcb above where the holes are for the screws to come up there are holes in that PCB so that the screw can come up through the metal mount mount base, stator base, and then it can go up into the empty hole in the PCB. Um, Newbie Drone 702s uh, do not have those holes there. And uh, what I have now done twice is drive screws up into that PCB um, and it has actually cracked the PCB. Um, but what it's also done is push, uh, push the windings up into the bell. Uh, oh man. All right. So, uh, I, I, the, even though it, cracked the PCB, they were still working. Hopefully I didn't make it a lot worse just now. Um, I've got screws here in this frame that I was using with these 702s that I believe are a little bit shorter. Um, let's take a look. The Hummingbird motors, let me guess, they fixed this problem on them, didn't they? Yep. The Hummingbird motors have a differently shaped PCB that does not uh that just is not above those holes so they can use a longer screw i hope i didn't just kill these motors i mean two of them were spinning and and one of the other two that wasn't spinning was trying to spin and i didn't uh check out the the last motor that wasn't spinning i didn't touch it to feel whether or not it was spinning all right so here's a screw that i pulled out and here's a screw that i was using in the acro b and yep the acro b screw is shorter so uh when you buy these 702s this is now the second time that i'm saying this on a live stream when you buy these newbie drone 0702s they are going to come with a set of screws that are shorter you need to use them <laughs> forgot about that uh well you know maybe we're not going to try this on 702s i don't know I, I i'm cautiously optimistic that it'll be okay let's swap all these screws over uh some other cool things over on cidf pv i've got an etsy store with some really fun stickers that you can get show your support uh there is a teespring store with a bunch of really fun t-shirts there is uh like i said patreon de definitely helps me out the most and you're gonna get a lot of really cool benefits um i've written a bunch of tech articles on the patreon page that you're gonna get access to um you're gonna get invited to my facebook groups my two facebook groups one of them is for selling stuff which is kind of cool because it's a trusted group of people um, the other one is just for kind of hanging out. You're going to get full access to the discord, which is super fun. Uh, the community that has latched on to me, uh, is really amazing. It's, it's a bunch of total FPV nerds that are really into making these things fly as good as they possibly can and just dive in a little bit deeper into this stuff. Um, so if, if you're looking to, uh, you know, really learn and, and really dive in a little bit deeper than most to uh, the wonderful world of FPV. 
uh, I've got a group of people that uh, you're going to get along really well with. And you're going to learn an awful lot from. <laughs> all right. Almost have all of these shorter screws removed here from the Acrobe V4. Uh, let me scroll down and chat a little bit, see what else you people are talking about here. Uh, Stingray Zay says, solutions to help with better stick resolution for whoops. Sticks rarely leave center when flying. Um, you got to work on your rates, Stingray. Um, and basically, you just need more expo. Expo is... is typically kind of the answer um, to what you're getting at here. So it, go if you're not already on actual rates, definitely switch over to actual rates. Um, put your center stick sensitivity pretty low. Um, I use a value of 40. Uh, that is extremely low. You might not want to go that low right off the bat, um, but give it a try. Uh, and then for Expo, you want to add a bunch. I use... Uh, either 70 or 0.7 i forget what it is you'll you'll see it in there um that's a lot that's a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot i am a cinematic pilot first and foremost though so i want all of my camera moves to be very slow very gentle very smooth um you probably don't want 70 i would do like maybe 40 or 30 uh to get yourself started and that should get you out of the center of the stick travel quite a bit and then for the um uh, the last value is like maximum stick rotation. Keep that low. Keep that like 600, 700, 800. Um, unless you want to fly super thrashy, but it doesn't really sound like you do. Um, yeah, but you just need to spend some time with rates. And then you mentioned throttle resolution. Throttle resolution is uh, can be greatly improved with throttle expo. Again, we're talking about expo. Um, or just stick time. Stick time is really the thing. Throttle resolution is the hardest thing to learn in all of FPV. Um, and so stick time is really the, the answer to, to better throttle resolution. But throttle expo, when set up properly, uh, can certainly help. And I think I've got a live stream about that. So if you search my channel, go to my channel, and then there's a little magnifying glass off on the right side. Um, search for... Uh, throttle expo. I think I've got a video where I dive into it. Um, I've, I've, I, I, if I don't have a specific live stream with it in the title, um, the, the search should find, um, the, uh, should find some, uh, time codes that Apache Smoke Wounded Sniper and Quadbot have very, very, very kindly done for many, many, many of these uh, live streams talking about <clears throat> throttle expo and and me showing you how to set it um and yeah there you'll go away you will go great question by the way i did not keep track of which one i did although you can very easily see it on the bottom which one the screws are smashing the shit out of the pcbs on so we are good to go uh, can I get a channel says five foot seven. This is all new because I'm interested. Indoor is so cool. Thanks. You're certainly welcome. Frank Dillon says, uh, share the t-shirt about wrong answers. Oh, what, uh, uh, refresh my memory, Frank. That, that was a really good one. Um, uh, uh, uh Frank. Oh, there he goes. Yeah. Uh, there's an FPV Lux link that Frank, Nic Frank Nicholas shared. Uh, it's a bad advice t-shirt. I, I think it's absolutely hysterical. Check it out. Uh, Giddy Gimbals. That's a fun, that's a fun YouTube name. I like that. Giddy Gimbals says, uh, what kind of difference in flight time should I expect going from 0802 19,000 to 0702 28,000? Um, that is unfortunately an impossible question for me to answer, Giddy, because that the answer to that question will vary with every single different pilot. Um, if the extra power and RPM that you get from the, the new motors causes you to use less throttle, um, then you will actually get more runtime, 
because the 702s are lighter than the 802s. If the extra power makes you have more fun and use more power and more throttle, then you'll potentially get less runtime. Um, there is no answer to that question. Although if you ask that question on Facebook groups, you'll get plenty of wrong answers from idiots. Um, yeah, it completely depends on the pilot. Some people, when they get a more powerful motor, go all crazy and fly faster um, and yeah, use that extra power. Uh, and then in that case, you'll get less runtime because you're using more energy. Um, some people fly exactly the same and every once in a while blip the throttle to use that extra power. And in that case, you'll probably get more runtime because it's a lighter motor. So yeah, good question, brother. It's actually a really good question um, that you will get the wrong answer to from most people. Uh, Denzel the Terrible says, Ciotti Sr. is a saint. He is indeed. I'm, I'm a lucky motherfucker for having such an incredible mother and father. And uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm blessed as the, as the religious folks say. Not that I believe in any of that, which is okay. We're all snowflakes. We can believe what we want <laughs> because America, believe it or not, America is not a Christian country. It's a country that you're free to practice any religion that you'd like. I think we forget that a lot of times. And it's important to not forget that. <laughs> really important to not forget that. All right, last screw going in here. And oh, balls fell inside of the frame. Man, the, the normal length tiny whoop motor screws are all kinds of annoying to deal with. These extra short ones are another level of madness. But with a magnetic screwdriver and just repeating in your head over and over and over again, Woosa, motherfucker, woosa, you will get them. Just, just remember to breathe. All right, there we go. So now um, I'm going to take a, a set of tweezers and I'm going to go pirate mode. And I just want to push the PCBs that I smashed upwards with the, uh, with these longer screws. I'm going to push these PCBs back down against the stator base because when I push them up, uh, they push the windings up into the bottom of the motor bell. And that's why uh, those two motors were not spinning. Uh, this is what I had to do last time as well. It sucks, but hey, it worked last time. Hopefully it works again this time. So oh, there's one. Here comes the next one. And come on now. All right, that one should be good. Here's the next one. Okay, push that PC back down. None of the PCBs have broken yet. They're they're all cracked. But, um, I don't know, it feels like Newbie Joe makes a pretty durable product here to be able to take. This is the second time I've done this now. Made this mistake. Oh, man, this one got pushed up really far. Oh, God. Come on, buddy. Survive. Please survive. Oh man, that PCB is so cracked. <laughs> Ugh. Okay, that one's back down. Yar! Uh, Denzel the Terrible says, uh, can I get a channel? Don't post six comments in a row back to back like that, please. Uh, Denzel the Terrible says, yeah, more dad comp content. People need more. Uh, Apache Smoke Wounded Sniper says, uh, how you doing, friend? I'm good. Still a little sick, though. 
and we're good. All right, cool. Uh, let's get these. Well, hopefully, let's let's see if the motors spin up. <laughs> Is going to be the first thing that we're going to do here, and then if they sp spin up, uh, let's get them spinning in the correct direction. And I'm also going to wind them up to 100% throttle to see if they all spin at roughly the same uh, RPM because, yeah, I might have hurt one or more of them with the stupidity. Understand the risks. Wizard, start and spin. They're all spinning now. That's amazing. Uh, motor one is wrong. But, well, let's do this. They are all spinning in props out orientation now. Oh no, I already put the propellers on for props in, so we're gonna reverse them all. Stop, close, turn this back on. Let's make sure they're all spinning the right direction. Now they're props in, props in, props in, props in. Okay, so we're good. Uh, so now individually I'm gonna ramp these things up and we're just gonna listen to make sure that they're, they hit roughly the same pitch. Sounds about right. Technically speaking, we could do that again and look here for the RP. Oh, what? Oh, uh, and we could look here for the RPM. 56,000 tooltip, get the fuck out of there. Why, why are you there? Go away, jackass. What? There we go, okay. Uh, 56,000, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, there it goes. Wait, hold on. Uh-oh. What's happening? 55,000. 53,000. That one's kind of hurting. Motor 3. 52,000. Motor 4 is hurting, too. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're close, but what's happening with Motor 2? It doesn't like when I just spike it. It wants me to lean into it. That's weird. That's not gonna, that's not a great thing. Uh, well, let's throw it up in the air. See what's what. Uh, this battery is now no longer remotely fully charged, but we're gonna run it anyway to run it all the way down. And then we'll put a fresh 250 on and then we'll put a fresh 300 on. Um, Right now, this is about as good as it's going to get, in theory, uh, without breaking out the soldering iron. So, let's see how this is. But there's still the big question of how's the, how the tune's going to be. So, let's see. <laughs> Got to do that in order for this thing to work. All right, come on, ELRS, connect, connect. There it is. Whoa, oh, the battery's shot, okay. It feels terrible. Uh, it feels real bad, but this battery might just be shot. I hope that's the case. Um, let's throw this other 250 on it. Not encouraging so far. Uh, but man, these motors have been through hell. I, I, I'm going to have to buy another set of these 702s and not break those uh, PC. Uh, yeah, not break the PCBs. All right, let's give it a shot. Uh, this battery's way more dead than that one was. Okay, both of the 250 mAh batteries have been discharged. Good to know. Uh, I've got a fresh 300 mAh battery here, though. Let's give this one a shot. Hopefully this... Uh, Saves the day. And then we're gonna go to BT 2.0. Uh, yeah, 1130, we should have time. All right, here we go, 300 mAh battery. Better. Okay. Well, stop it. Let me go. Okay. It doesn't, doesn't really seem to have more power. Um, It also doesn't really feel, I mean, it is lighter, but it doesn't feel much lighter. Maybe it does. Ah! 
Stop it. Yo, those... Those hummingbird motors... Are really good. It does feel lighter. Um... I'm gonna... I'm gonna put this onto the gem fan by blades real quick. They are a known quantity. Uh, there's a chance that this thing just doesn't like these Venom props. I, I've always been a little bit uh, wary of these Venom by blades. So let's get them off and, and get the, the, the known quantity gem fan by blades that match up really well with high KV 0702s on here. Um, just to eliminate a, a, a potential, uh, yeah, source of yuck. Uh, also, it could be that I didn't pull the windings down off the motor bells. So with with me jacking up the uh, the windings and the PCBs on these motors, if there's one motor like motor two that's uh, that's weak the PID loop is going to pull the rest of the motors down to match it. Um, so that very well could be what's going on here because motor two was acting really funny. Um, and then we saw motors three and four didn't spin up to that full RPM. Um, that full 25,000, I think it was RPM that we saw at a motor one. So, um, yeah, this is this is tough. Like I've introduced a bunch of chaos and noise to this testing, unfortunately. But hey, if you've watched any of my live streams, that will not be shocking to you. But Edison says uh, could be motor startup ramp up power. I think it was newbie drone that recommended maxing it out on Blue Jay. Um, that wouldn't really affect the, the raw amount of power that this thing is, uh, kind of lacking. And usually the, the startup ramp up power will show itself. If, if it's too low, it will show itself as the motor, uh, twitching at lower, um, at lower throttle values. Um, it usually won't like when you ramp it up to full, it, it overcomes that. Um, so I don't think it's that it could be anything's possible, but, uh, my guess is that it, it isn't that, um, okay. Almost there. Come on, come on, come on. Get off of there. Get over there. There we go. Okay. Uh, I've also flown a bunch of batteries through these uh, 0702 motors on the other Acro B, and it was kind of acting funny at one point. So there's a chance that I just hurt these motors. Realistically, um, I would like to get a fresh set of these 702 29,000 kV newbie drone motors. Um, but let's at least throw these uh, beta flight, beta flight gem fan by blades on here, um, which I know are a really good match with high KV 0702s. <laughs> because we can. And then we'll go BT 2.0. And that's when the true chaos will begin. I mean, that's when we will maybe run into a bunch of tune issues, to be really honest. All right, gem fan by blade time. Let's see if this is any better. I mean, maybe they're they're gonna hit the, the frame, so it could be unflyable or worse, we'll see. Let you know in two seconds. Nope. Oh God, I just, uh, I couldn't decide if I was gonna go over it or under it. So I went into it. They don't really feel any better. Um, I like it better on the motors that it ships with. 
I said that there's a really good chance that we were going to make this thing worse tonight. And we have... Oh, God. Almost. Almost had the mega power loop there. Yeah. Turtle mode is... Is a little weird. Ah! Um. Oopsie. Let's chill out. See how when I turn, it turns with me? See that? See, like, it just changes direction? That's the lightweight. That's what lightweight does. It allows it to stop sliding and actually change direction when, when you ask it to change direction. And I need that. Like, uh, that, uh, I, when, when the rigs are really fat and heavy, like the 75 mil motor to motor rigs, I, I just, I just fall apart. Yeah, man, turtle mode is really weird on here. Now it's not working. This battery's donezo. BD 2.0 time. Um, it, oh, I Stevie wondered it. You didn't miss much. I crashed a whole bunch. Did a couple Ciotti loops. Um... Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Uh, let's get BT 2.0 in here. I am going to... Oh, man. I only got 13 minutes left. Let's uh, just absolutely blast through this. This is going to be a lot less. I, I, I'd like to, uh, to kind of give you guys soldering tutorials when I do this stuff. Um, I've done that plenty of times on previous live streams. I don't have time to do that here today. So forgive me, but I'm just going to rail through this uh, to try to get it done. But first, since Logitech makes the worst webcam software on earth, I have to screw around with this like an asshole. Okay, and it's just broken again because, you know, why not? There we go. Okay. Uh, all right, let's pop this thing apart real quick and, uh, get BT 2.0 installed so that I can run my normal batteries, um, which is going to give us more runtime, uh, and more power, which is like the greatest thing on earth. Like it's my favorite thing about BT 2.0 is that you get both usually you can either get more power or more runtime but you can almost never get both uh, but with battery connectors that have less resistance in situations where the 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 battery connector that is on the quad has too much resistance um, you can actually get both things which is just awesome uh, front screw is still in of course Okay, here we go. So I think I'm just going to cut this uh, connector off of here. Oh, Christ, I forgot to unplug the motors. <laughs> I'm really rushing through this. And not pull them out by the wires. Pull them out by the plugs like, a, like you should. Okay, and there we go, cool. Uh, so there's what the Hummingbird AIO looks like, in case you were wondering. Uh, they've got these things soldered uh, going in the upward direction. I'm actually going to put them into the downward direction. Uh, somebody type into the chat for me, ground uh, is, uh, is by the, um, the grommet. Ground by the grommet. GG. Good game, my friends. Here we go. We're going to remove this. 
Uh, I just put a little bit of flux on there, which is going to aid in quick heat transfer. If you're not fluxing, you're going to fux it up, yo. So make sure you're fluxing. Uh, no, I won't. I won't solder it directly on there. What is this? Uh, I would love to use a little bit of this wire. Nah. What gauge is this wire, though? Is that 24? Yeah, it looks like it's 24. Uh, I've got some 24 gauge wire floating around here somewhere. Let me just find it. Nope. It's uh, antenna stuff. This should be it. Yep. All right, so let's get some 24 gauge. Is that what they used as well? Let's see. Uh, uh, kind of rubbed off. That's a shame. I bet you it's 24, though. It looks like 24. Um, here's a bunch of 24. Uh, I'm just going to use black because I like to make my life difficult. 24 and 24. Cool. I do not recommend doing this, but you know, if you're going to do something dumb. You might as well do something dumb with a quad. That's, that's a strange thing to say out loud. Uh, okay. So I'm going to snip these off here. Re strip the ends of these with our fingernails because your fingernails will never nick the inner strands of wire, which is important with thin little wires. All right, cool. And so pull that silicone back a little bit. Give a little twist to make sure they're all bundled up. Uh, now we are going to, off the side of the table here, I'm just going to tin these real quick. Again, I'm, I'm just in a hurry right now. I just want to blast through this. There's plenty of live streams with good soldering info um, if you need help with that. Or basically on any other live stream, if you ask me any soldering questions, we can work through it. But for right now, I just want to knock this out. There we go. They are tinned. I'm going to hook them up to the AIO first, and then I'm gonna put the AIO into the quad so that I can figure out um, how much uh, distance that I need between the AIO and the, uh, and the BT 2.0 connector. This is uh, thermally resistive putty from Mass Adhesives. It's really good stuff. Um, it is better than blue tack and it doesn't really cost all that much money. So get yourself some support. Cool little companies making cool stuff. Right, a little fly that was just crawling towards me for no real reason. Uh, okay, these are a little bit too long here. Let me just cut them down a little bit. All right. And I'm gonna try better view of what I'm up to here. All right, so I got that chopped down. Let me use a little bit more flux here. Oh boy, that's way too much. Way, 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 way too much. Way too much, way too much. Up if I can, all right. Flux here, a little bit there. Okay. And we can even put some on the wire. Just cause he's too much. <clears throat> All right, here we go. And real quick, get it in position. Bring the solder, tip of the soldering iron in just for heat. You're not gonna use it to push. Good. Let me just make sure. I want to pull 
one finger on top so I can hold the board a little bit more steady. So these have these little pockets on the outside of the board for you to push this into. Um, and in this case, you are actually going to push a little bit with the tip of the soldering iron just to make sure it's in that little pocket. And now we're good to go. Um, normally, uh, you want to make sure that your offhand is doing the majority of the control of the wire. You don't want to rely on the tip of the soldering iron to hold the wire in position because at some point you're going to have to remove the tip of the, uh, the soldering iron from the work. And if it's the only thing that was holding the wire down, the wire is going to remove, the wire is going to come with it basically, right? And you don't want that. All right, hold on. Let me get a little bit of flux on the tip of this wire. There we go. That'll be better. Okay. This uh, this wire does not is not tinned quite enough at the moment, but there's a lot of solder on this pad. So as long as I can get the wire to heat up, which I should be able to now that I put flux on it, uh, we're going to be all right here. The, the solder flows towards the heat. So the additional solder ouch, that's on the pad here is going to flow up onto the wire. So we're in a situation where the, the work is moving around, which is not great. So we want to push it down into the putty a little bit. Just make sure that I'm getting the flat part of the tip of the soldering iron here onto the... And now all of the, um, all of the flux is gone from the wire. So this is going to be annoying. But I'm just going to mash through it like an idiot instead of doing it right. No, I'm not. All right, I need to um, I need to get some actual solder on the tip of this wire here. Hold on, I need to retin it. When I when I cut the wire down, I cut all of the uh, the tinned part off of it. All right, there we go. Now there it is. Now the wire is tinned. So now watch the difference this makes. The the pad actually doesn't have any flux on it at the moment, but the wire is properly tinned. So this should actually work here. When you're doing this small stuff, you really want to like make sure you adhere to the basics of soldering and not like half-ass it um, and do it in a hurry like I'm doing it right now. That's fine. That's going to be completely fine. I'm, uh, I'm going to bail on this and just keep going because now there's only 10 minutes left. All right, so these are now going downwards. Um, hold on, let me switch the cameras again. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is spec out the uh, the wire length that I need. So we're going to run these wires through the frame in the same way that they're going to sit and pop this thing down. It's actually sitting backwards. We can see where that little collar broke off in the rear of the frame there. Um, so let's run those towards the rear and we'll put these guys down here and now we're going to take our battery that we're going to run and we're going to slap it into the, uh, to the battery bay and we're going to push it all the way forward. And so now we can take our BT 2.0 lead, put it on here and now we can look at exactly how much wire we need. Um, and then we want to cut them a little bit, uh, a little bit beyond that. We want to have a little tiny bit extra. So line it up here where it needs to be, and then just put my flush cutters a little bit beyond that spot and cut them down. And now we've got as short as possible of a wire run, and that's going to save us even more weight. Um, I know it seems insane, but it actually does matter. Um, with tiny whoops the the length of it actually matters on all rigs the the battery wires are pretty thick gauge and they're pretty damn heavy um, so shortening them up can actually give you a uh, 
little boost in performance by saving weight. On like a five inch rig, you can save like five or six grams doing that. And that's real. That's a real weight savings there. If you can find a, like two or three or four different things that save five or six grams, that's really significant. Um, what I'm doing with these BT 2.0 leads is spinning them so that the flat spots are outwards uh, so that I can, since it's so tight, um, this really helps you to have just a little bit of extra space uh, between the, the positive and negative wires to make sure that they don't uh, jump to each other. And it's cool. That is now looking good. All right. Now for the hard part. Uh, we're going to put this BT 2.0 lead into uh, another lead so that the pins don't come, don't get cockeyed when, when we're doing this. And then I'm just going to drop this guy into this thermally resistive putty and just kind of, yeah, enrobe it in there or whatever. And we'll pull the AIO back out with the wires and I'm going to tin the wires, strip the wires, tin the wires, and then hook them up there. So ground was by the grommet. So ground is going to be on the outside. And then I believe on BT 2.0 round is ground. I, I believe the round part of the, uh, of the BT 2.0 connector, that pin on the round side is the ground. Uh, and we can confirm that in a second here uh, with this other BT 2.0 lead that I have sitting here. And yeah, sure enough, ground is uh, the black wire is on the round side. So let me really quickly just tin these wires again off camera. I apologize, but I just want to get this done right now so I can fly one or two more batteries for you and show you what BT 2.0 does to this thing. I mean, at this point, we'll basically be fully upgraded. Um, when my Meteor 65 Air frames come, I might swap one of those on here to try to save a little bit of extra weight. Uh, but maybe not. I, 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 I don't know. This cockroach frame is pretty damn light. So we might not need to do that. It might not be worth it to do that, I should say. Uh, okay, so... This is coming off here, and then this is gonna be like that. So we want this lead, round is ground, and the ground is by the grommet. So we're gonna come in at a 45 degree angle here to this BT 2.0 lead, uh, because that's how you do it with the shortest possible wire run. And I gotta put the nerd goggles on here because this is real small work. Um, I'm going to flux the BT 2.0 lead instead of tinning it, because I want to put as little heat into it as possible. All right, it is fluxed. And let's see if we can get this real quick here. Doing a lot of this work with my fingers. Um, you do get burned, but just, you know, take one for the team. All right, it's a little bit high. Try to get it pushed down a little bit. Let's stick it. No, let's stick it off and do it again. Bring the soldering in, uh, iron in at an angle here. So that as it pushes, it pushes it downwards. Nah, it keeps wanting to shift up high. I'm going to have to do this with tweezers. My fingers are just too fat. It is hard to do. i got to be honest. Put, putting this on at a 45 degree angle like this is tough. It's totally doable. Um, you just might need to rework it a couple times. And don't stay on it for too long. Don't overheat it. Shit, it keeps coming up. There it is. 
that's the one. Now we're going to do the one on the near side. Right. It's tough because you got to be able to push it into the into the gold BT 2.0 lead, but you also have to keep it pointing down just right. Um, it ain't easy. You can do it though. Right. And we're going to give it a little tug just to make sure it's strong. Yeah, we're good. And then we just do a little visual to make sure they're sitting down somewhat flat. And I think we're all right. And now the last thing we do is just put a little bit of shrink wrap on here um, to keep it from... Uh, it's just it, it gives you something to hold on to and it just protects it from touching up against something metal and shorting um, Not my best work Not my worst though and What matters is that it's strong so Away we go What matters is that it's strong and it's done <laughs> So all right, let's get a little piece of shrimp wrap here I'm just gonna use this little piece of black because it's just about long enough. No, it's not. I need a little bit longer. Okay, that should work. And I use shrink wrap that's a little bit too small and then I just stretch it out. And that way it's gonna shrink up even smaller. Um, that's a little trick. You can't stretch it much. You gotta be really gentle when you're stretching it, but you can stretch it out a little bit. And now it should, in theory, fit over here. I might actually need to go up a size. This might be a little too small. Let's try to give it another little stretch though. There we go. That, you can kind of just feel it, like when, it, when you really start to pull on it. <laughs> That's right, I said it. And see, so now, oh shit, it's not long enough. When when you stretch it, it gets a little bit, uh, it gets a little bit shorter, right? Because it like, uh, does one of those. Uh, what if I use this piece of clear shrimp wrap here? It's a little too big, and it's a little too long. So let's just cut it down a little bit. All right. This is like really thin stuff, which I don't usually like, but hey, what the hell, let's give it a shot. Okay, back it off a little bit there and hit it with some heat. And then I like to just kind of pinch the end like that just to kind of close it down. And you can also actually like seal the, the shrink wrap if, if you do this little thing while it's still hot. Like the shrink wrap will literally make a little seal. It's kind of nice. All right, we're good. We are BT 2.0'd on the Hummingbird V3. Let's see how it is. Uh, I'm going to run it on freshly charged uh, newbie drone. I'm sorry. We bleed FPV 300 mAh batteries. Oh my God, I have to put it all back together. I forgot about that part. This in here, this in here. You mean I can't just push the motors onto the AIO and they'll magically work? Damn. Okay. Plug the motors in. First, and there's really no order of operations here. It doesn't matter if you do the screws first or plug the motors in first. It's probably better to do the screws in first because when you when you go to plug these motors in, it, it tries to push the AIO up off of the uh, the posts in the frame. But whatever. 
already begun to do it this way, so I'll keep going. There we go, that's fine. Waters are plugged in. Now let's get the canopy plugged back in. Uh, this is the front of the canopy here. This is where the camera plugs in. They have a little proprietary-ish camera plug for all of their BI cameras. Got that. And then here is the uh, VTX antenna, little whip antenna with the cool little grommet that goes through the goober canopy. Snap that UFL down, now we're good. Uh, we got one screw up in the front here that doesn't go through the goober canopy that we'll put in first. Shit sticks. Uh, hey, how's the, uh, how's the volume when I'm sitting over here on the new microphone? The, the levels look okay when I turn my head right now, but like when I'm talking towards the, the tiny whoop, I'm assuming it maybe gets a little quiet. Does it get too quiet? Um, those of you, uh, the main people I want to hear from are the folks that have watched a lot of my previous live streams. I want to try to get the, uh, the levels back to where they once were on the other microphone. The other microphone was much more omnidirectional. What I might need to do with this new mic, which is a shotgun mic, which is very directional, um, is turn it towards me when I come over here to the bench. Um, technically I could also, I could just hook up the old microphone and put it in front of the, the workbench here. Um, but I would rather not have another thing going on. Um, so yeah, I'll try to do, I'll try to get the single mic to work first. And then if we can't get it, then we'll go down that possible two mic road. Uh, let's get this ELRS antenna poking back up out of the canopy where it belongs. There we go. And the last screw, the extra long Happy Model Modula 7 screw is gonna go through the rear mounting point. And we're just gonna drive it down into the, the meaty part of the frame. And let's just make sure that these screws on the side here are tight. They were not, I'm glad I checked them. All right, there we go, that should be good. Uh, okay, let me get these screws out of here because I will definitely crash into them and they'll go everywhere. Okay. Damn, I can't believe, uh, I can totally believe actually that for the second time I uh, put screws that were too long into these 702s. That's really annoying. Uh, round is ground, round is by the grommet. Good. Uh, round side this direction. Hopefully I made the leads long enough. They are just, just, just barely long enough. Quad fired up without exploding. That's a good thing. Transmitter coming on. Here we go. <laughs> Somebody types into the chat, remember black equals positive. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem with using two black wires. <laughs> Easy thing to do is to take like a red uh, metallic Sharpie. Uh, and, and run it down the length of the wire. Now we're talking, my friends. Oh boy. Uh, I can't help but wonder what those Hummingbird motors would be like on this BT 2.0 plug. All right, hold on, let me... Uh, Oh, that's not recoverable. Uh, this feels great. Uh, it's got more power as expected from BT 2.0. Let's dig into this a little bit here. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo, yeah, here we go. We're back. Looks a lot like the uh, Ultimate Freestyle Tiny Whoop, doesn't it? Feels a lot like it too. 702 by blades. Whoa! Oh! I might be taking the walk. Ooh, I got very lucky on that one. Yeah. 
yeah, this is, this is it. This thing flies great. <laughs> ah. Oh, that's going to be a walk. Man, turtle mode is acting really weird. Come on. Hey. Yes. Woo. <laughs> Getting a little bit out of sorts here. Oh, God. Um, it's, it's still a little bit heavier than, man, turtle mode is very strange. Um, sorry, I keep saying that guys. This just feels very normal to me. Um, which, you know, my normal is 32,000 KV 702s on gem fan Blades on a rig that weighs like. 18.9 grams dry so a tiny whoop that feels normal to me is a hell of a compliment oh yeah this is hot it flies better for sure okay so we didn't we didn't ruin it by upgrading it um i'm very curious to see this on the hummingbird 802s to be really honest but what what might be going on is that these these 702 Come on. I don't, I don't get it. Um, these 702-29,000s might have just sort of needed the BT 2.0 uh, extra juice to come alive. I doubt that's the case, but, oh, come on now. Uh, but it could be. Oh man, I am just flying like a buffoon. Case in point. Uh, this flies great though. <laughs> this flies really good. Ah! Let's do another quick one. I am digging this. I am uh, very impressed. Uh, so now the stress testing bands, I made these leads like a fraction of a millimeter too short. Uh, I'm going to put this battery on the charger because I over discharged it a little bit there. Yeah, I brought down the 3.1. That's not great. Here's another battery that's fresh off the charger that we're going to throw on here. Can I get just a little bit of extra out of this lead? All right. Yeah, this is uh, this is legit, man. This is um, I'm I'm impressed. I am impressed, and I do not impress easily. There we go. Other than the BT 2.0, this is plug and play. You know what I mean? Motors plugged right in. Hey, what's happening there? Oh boy. Hey. Ah. <laughs> my 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 timing is just a little bit off. I'm I'm just so used to uh, I don't See, I'm I'm full stick and it, and like nothing's I uh, There it goes. I don't know. Turtle mode thing is very confusing. Uh, yeah, my timing is just a little bit off. You know, what? what's interesting is that this feels similar enough where my brain is not in like, yo, you're flying something different mode. Um, that's me turning the OSD off. Uh, so my brain just goes into like the autopilot mode. And then when, when I'm in the autopilot mode, if, if there's anything that's different from what I normally fly, I, I just, you know, I, I, I'm on the same timing. I'm doing the same things with the sticks. And so the rig is just not quite going to react in the same way. 
if that makes sense. Oh, <laughs> ah, I missed it. Um, but let's let's just uh, let's just get down with this thing for a little bit here. Ah, ah, so close. <laughs> That's a weird spot to crash. Come on, turtle mode. Well, that was interesting. It's almost like it's not turtle moding. Like, like, why is it? Why is nothing happening? Why is it not? There it goes. Like, it's almost like it's it's not actually spinning the props backwards. Ah, I was close. I think I'm taking a walk on this one. Who's awake? Who's up there stomping around? Oh, the little ceiling tap. Come on now. Oh, nope. <laughs> oh yeah so it's it's like it's a little bit it's a little bit heavier um and it it's got just a little bit less power and so i'm coming up short on some stuff if i put a bunch of batteries through this i would get used to it ah But damn, this is real good, man. This is really, really good. Ah, that was just me flying poorly. Let's try some, let's try some real technical. What's happening? Is there no battery left? Oh boy, 2.1, that battery is done forever. Um. I forgot that I just have the full-blown OSD turn off set up. Um, I'm used to getting a warning when the battery is getting low. Uh, that is my bad. Oh my God, that says 2.8. That's not going well. Uh, okay, we got another couple batteries here and I'm digging this. So I'm just going to keep flying, yo. This is really impressive. This is the best newbie drone rig I've ever flown. Ah, come on now. Let's uh, let's get let's get going. Let's get this dialed in here. It's still in turtle mode. I also have no uh, throttle expo right now, which is making. Um, this really low altitude throttle management a lot more difficult. So, <clears throat> but in order to dial in the throttle expo, I would need to go into the OSD and plug into beta flight. Uh, <coughs> um, so let's just fly this. Oh, not your owl. Oh, <laughs> Oh, shit. Missed it. <laughs> oh, I love it. Ah, <laughs> caught it right before the table. Ah, damn it. Didn't quite get it through there. Oh, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't do that on purpose, but I like that it happens. Ah! Nope, not quite. Ah, that was stupid. I, I just kind of didn't, didn't decide. Please, please come on. Come on. Come on. You almost have to, like, if you just go full stick over, um, 
like quickly, it doesn't spin the motors up for some reason. You gotta like ease into it with turtle mode. It's I've never experienced that before. I don't know what's happening there. Whoa, buddy. Here's the uh, here's the new subwoofer. Paradigm PS one thousand, big ass twelve inch driver with a. You know, I actually don't know what uh, the amp uh, what the watt rating is on the amplifier that's in there, but it slams. It hits really low and it sounds really good. I put uh, the expanse on and it was just mayhem. Uh, really, really, really cool. It's so nice to have a, uh, a 12 inch driver again. Back there in the corner. Come on, unplug. These BT 2.0 connectors sometimes get like really buried in there and they're kind of hard to, uh, to unplug. Ah, there we go. Uh, I've got two more. What time is it? 1217? Fuck it. Let's go. You guys are still hanging. Uh, Kevin Sumner says, is there a turtle mode power limiter in the, in the CLI? I don't think so because it, eventually it ramps up to full turtle mode. This just feels like some weird thing in the hex or some weird thing. My guess would be this is something weird in Blue Jay. Or BL Heli, I would like to maybe put this back to Blue J.16. And uh, I'm willing to bet you that fixes the problem. Um, all of these Blue J releases after 0.16 have seemed to have problems. I think this is on Blue J.2, which I tried, and it was it didn't fix the problem on the on the T motor boards. Oh, what did I hit? What? What was that? So this is still basically on Newbie Drone's tune. And it rips. Look at it. I mean, zero prop wash. Woohoo! Look at this thing! Yeah! Oh, that was dumb. What a blast. Um, we're not getting great runtime here, although the batteries that I'm running right now have been sitting charged for a few days, so it, it's kind of tough. Um, for some reason, the, the newbie drone boards, I've always noticed that I've gotten less runtime on them than the um, Happy Model boards. It's not the LEDs. The, the LEDs take like pretty much no uh, energy. Um, I don't know what it is. I, I yeah, I've noticed this on the Acrobees too. Like on on a on a very similar setup to the the Happy Model Mobula six boards. On the newbie drone setup, I'll get like two minutes, and then um, on the Happy Model setup, I can get like three. This is gonna be our last uh, our last battery, friends, and then I'll get caught up on chat a little bit, and then uh, we're gonna wrap this thing up. See, like, there's no limiter on on turtle mode. Like, it's ramping up full, but it's not spinning the motors backwards. Like, it's if it was, well, no, it was it was wedged just now. Um, but yeah, when it's not working, it's not spinning the motors backwards um, because it's not. Oh my God, what is happening? It's not like budging. You know, it's not moving at all. And if the motors are spinning backwards, it's at least going to move a little bit. Oh, God! I can't believe I made that last gate there! I don't run gates, though. That's silly. Ah. Uh, let's try to get the... Oh! <laughs> of course, I can't get it twice cleanly. <laughs> oh, 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 you son of a bitch, you! That's a new, that's a, 
that's a new thing there, yo. That is a new fucking thing right there. Damn. With the newbie drone rig. The the new newbie drone trick. Yo. How did I, what did I even do? Oh god. <laughs> See, it's not, it's, and now it won't, uh, I don't know, man, I don't know what the hell's happening there. That's what I did. Maddie flipped through the first two, and then Ciati looped through the, through the other two. Oh, I almost did it again, damn! Oh, I was trying to get all freaky with it. Woo! Come on! What can't we do with the Hummingbird V3? God damn, bro! Oh, oh no! <laughs> I think I heard it. <laughs> oh shit, the OST is all jacked up. Ooh, that was a hard hit. I don't even know where it is. Back here, oh, I just touched the wall. I've been really good about not touching the wall. I used uh, a matte gray paint. Shit, where is it? Oh, here it is. Uh, let's uh, pull power and put power back just to reset it. Oh, boy. That was a hard hit. It's good. It's fine. Everything is cool. OSD is back to normal. 3.6. Last little bit here, friends. Damn, this is great. I love it. Hummingbird V3 gets a big old thumbs up from me. Oh god, I this this gate is just small enough where I have a real hard time with it. Oh! <laughs> the Ciati loop in your fucking face. Ah! Come on. Get in there. Oh, nope, 312, 312. Come home, come home, come home. <laughs> it's got these little foam feet on the bottom. So when when you land it, it just thump. <laughs> it just has such a little satisfying like stop to the to the landing. Um uh, that's rad, man. Yeah, so like one of the things that I really look for uh in bind and flies is the ability to grow with it. Um, that's what she said. And um, this has accomplished that for $90. That's gnarly. Um, from a U.S. reseller. Um, U.S. manufacturer, right? Like, they're, they're making this thing. Uh, uh, that's, like... That's... What more can you really ask for, right? It's really inexpensive. You can upgrade it and it doesn't like fall to pieces. Um, out of the box, it's awesome. So like, you want to get somebody into the hobby? There you go. Uh, you don't have that situation where you're like, hey, here, you can fly this for a couple of months and then you're going to completely outgrow it and not need it anymore. Um, you know, the the setup that we've got right now is damn near as good what's that nrc brooklyn nrc thanks for the sub yo um yeah the the setup that we've got here admittedly not quite as good as the full tilt like three years of of me trying every possible combination of everything ultimate freestyle tiny whoop right but damn is it close and it's using plug and play motors from newbie drone in california i did a little bit of soldering for the bt 2.0 you don't have to do the bt 2.0 as silly as i did you can just get a regular old pre-soldered bt 2.0 from tinywhoop.com and just tack it right onto the to the aio much simpler it's going to be a fraction of a gram heavier um this this is really impressive um Nobody's really been able to do this other than Happy Model.
right? With the Mobula 6 ELRS. Um, and yeah, I, I'm, I love that Newbie Drone was able to do this. Like, amazing job they they um they killed it on this one i'm gonna on wednesday put these hummingbird motors back on uh with the bt 2.0 and we're gonna see how they are we'll run them on tri-blades we'll run them on bi-blades um and yeah we can compare the newbie drone 702 29 000s to the hummingbird 802 25 000s uh newbie drone thanks for sending this thanks for giving me the, the the opportunity to do this upgrade build thing uh and thank you for making such a rock and rig with an awesome pid tune um please put a longer screw in the rear there uh and it'll fix that durability issue that me and nick burns ran into pretty quickly i don't know what else to say i, I like with a longer screw in the rear um, out of the box, it's awesome. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, happy model, watch out. <laughs> and I mean, this has... I bet you this AIO is lighter weight than the, than the Mobula 6 AIO. Um, <clears throat> so I wonder if I put this AIO into, a, into my ultimate freestyle setup, right? Meteor 65 frame... Uh, 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 Mobula 6 canopy and camera, right? I, I assume that this would be a lighter weight build. Which kind of means that this could be the Hummingbird AIO could become the the, the better option for an AIO in the ultimate freestyle setup. Um, I have a feeling it won't be because of this weird turtle mode thing. I, I know it doesn't seem like a big deal, but if you crash a lot and you turtle mode a lot, it's super annoying. Like I'm, I'm, I've the one thing that I'm not in love with, with is this strange turtle mode performance. Um, maybe I just have to be gentle on the stick and, and all as well. But I'm in a hurry and, and I'm not thinking about it. Maybe once I get used to that, that's not an issue anymore. Um, but and the damn thing has four really bright LEDs that are addressable in the corners. I try not to be such a jerk about like appearance things, but you know, if it's cool looking, you're gonna like it more. Just be honest with yourself. It's okay. I'm with you. Form over form over function, baby. It's all good. You you don't have to hide it. I'm 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 with you. I hide it, but it's there. Thanks for hanging, friends. Uh, damn, damn. I did not expect it to go this way. From from the previous hummingbirds, I. And, and to be really honest, from the Acro BV4, um, I did not expect this at all. And I am very pleasantly surprised. And um, yeah, I love Newbie Drone. You guys know that. Um, Newbie Drone's a great company with, with some great folks working there. Um, and I just absolutely love that they made something that's this, is, that's, that's this good. Because like the, the Tiny Lifters are awesome. So the the acro b v3 and v2 uh really 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 worked well in in the tiny lifters um but i didn't like them on basically anywhere else um this is so cool to have another like really 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 good option um for these like super shredder indoor uh tiny whoops good job guys <laughs> damn <laughs> Thanks for hanging, friends. Um, CiatiFPV.com if you like this stuff and you want to see it continue. I rely on you beautiful people to kick me a couple of dollars a month. If a bunch of you do it, I can keep doing this forever and uh, we'll hang out till the dawn of time and keep flying inside as the FAA crushes our souls with remote ID nonsense. Uh, here comes a little bit of uh, drift car chasing with the analog rigs. Get some epidemic sounds rolling here and uh, 
I'll see you guys on Whoop Wednesday. Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. Eastern time, of course. This song's called Yuck. Yuck indeed. Let's turn that off. Uh, no, we're not making a low-budget porno film here. Be good friends. I'll see you Wednesday. Thank you.